If you're tired of these promos, supporters get the podcast early and ad-free. Just go to donate.bogosity.tv for the links to sign up. Welcome to the Bogosity Podcast for the week of December 5, 2021. The podcast that invented the plastic magnet. This is your host, Shane Killian. Let's catheterize the news of the bogus. As we've covered, the police apologists write off the misconduct that occurs multiple times a day, day in and day out, as bad apples. Never mind that we keep seeing over and over again how they're almost completely protected from the consequences of their actions through things like qualified immunity. As we've pointed out, they're leaving out half the phrase, one bad apple spoils the whole bunch. Quality control is important. If anything, it's even less excusable with police, since there, the good apples have the ability to get rid of the bad. We've responded over and over again to the assertion that most cops are good with the rejoinder, then why don't they arrest the bad ones? The answer, of course, is because of the thin blue line which protects cops against accountability by the people. And as we've seen several times over the history of this podcast... When a rare good cop does try to do something about it, they're drummed down to the force and even threatened to the point where they have to leave the state or even the country. An investigation by USA Today shows that this is common and consistent across the country. Quote, To many in law enforcement, snitching against another cop is a betrayal that can't go unpunished. Those who enforce this code, the blue wall of silence, have stuffed dead rats and feces into fellow officers' lockers. They've issued death threats, ignored requests for backup, threatened family members, and planted drugs on the officers who reported wrong. Department leaders often condone these reprisals or pile on by launching internal investigations to discredit those who expose misconduct. Whistleblowers have been fired, jailed, and, in at least one case, forcibly admitted to a psychiatric ward. The pattern of behavior is both destructive and widespread throughout policing. And they brought the receipts in the form of public records requests and information from law enforcement whistleblowers. In even the worst cases of the most egregious and clear-cut wrongdoings, whistleblowers still don't feel safe bringing it to light. Quote, In South Carolina, an officer leaked the fact that fellow deputies beat a prisoner who later died in custody. In Florida, a detective who specialized in child sex crimes reported a captain who had impregnated a 16-year-old girl and then paid for her to have an abortion. In Oregon, a sergeant complained that a co-worker bragged about killing an unarmed teenager. After speaking out, all of them were forced out of their departments and branded traitors by fellow officers. Shannon Spaulding is one of the many who faced death threats after exposing corruption. Quote, Whistleblowing is a life sentence. I'm an officer without a department. I lost my house. I lost my marriage. It affects you in ways you would never imagine. Meanwhile, those whose wrongdoings were exposed keep their jobs or only get a slap on the wrist. And it's pervasive, not having anything to do with one group or another. Quote, Cases of retaliation appeared in every type of department. Majority black forces and majority white forces. Union and at-will agencies rural two-man outposts, and massive urban police departments, and, perhaps most notably, places that have adopted strict accountability measures. Reforms like body cameras and civilian oversight boards prove virtually worthless when law enforcement leaders and other local officials silence whistleblowers. As usual, although they insist otherwise, whistleblower protections are non-existent. Quote, Officers who report wrongdoing are often forced to navigate procedures that derail their efforts. Sometimes they must report up the chain of command to the very people they want investigated. Federal, state, and local agencies can take years to intervene or decline to investigate altogether. When agencies do take action, they often direct complaints back to the police department, compromising officers who expected anonymity. As we've covered, police unions have a lot to do with it. Quote, They often back cops accused of misconduct during court and disciplinary hearings, but not those who turn them in. And meanwhile, quote, Police chiefs and sheriffs who retaliate against whistleblowers rarely face serious consequences. 
Top law enforcement officials kept their jobs or were allowed to retire or resign in nearly all instances documented by USA Today. And it's a very open secret in police departments. For example, in Minnetonka, Minnesota, the report to file a grievance asks you to check one of the following boxes. Quote, I am thin-skinned. I am a pussy. I have woman-like hormones. I am a queer. I am a little bitch. I am a crybaby. I want my mommy. My butt is easily hurt. And all of the above. If you're looking at this thinking that it can't happen to police in your area, you're part of the problem. None of them are exempt. It's down to the core of American policing and very much a part of police culture. Every now and then they make an example out of someone like Derek Chauvin, but it's always pretending that that officer is the one and only problem while doing nothing about the culture and systemic issues that allowed it to happen and continue to allow it. The murder of George Floyd wasn't anything unique. It just happened to have been caught on video. If you're looking for a way to support this channel, but you don't have any spare cash and you can't stand ads, you can do so by generating your own cryptocurrency. Use the links at the bottom of the description to follow the link to odyssey.com to listen to the podcast and see all of my YouTube videos as well. Just watching videos will produce cryptocurrency for the creator and yourself. And since Odyssey is always monetized and never censored, you'll have no problem seeing all the videos from your favorite creators. You can also use the library credits you created Odyssey to tip creators and even purchase paid content. Earn library credits through various rewards, including daily view rewards and the number of shares and invites. And you can interact with creators in all sorts of ways, including like and dislike, comment, boost a post by supporting it, repost it, and share to other sites, all while earning crypto for the creator. Easily monetize yourself and your favorite creators using cryptocurrency without advertising. Use the link below to visit this channel on odyssey.com and see many of your other favorites there as well. So here's a combination cops behaving badly and war on drugs story, this time from Australia. We've talked about several cases in the US and even my home state of North Carolina where the testing for drugs is so ridiculous it keeps getting false positives from innocuous ingredients. In this case, a mother and daughter spent months in jail when a drug test misidentified, get this, tea. Connie Chong and Melanie Lim of Malaysia brought in 25 kilos of brown ginger tea to Australia to sell to others at a total markup of about 90 Australian dollars, about 63 American dollars. It's a markup of about a penny for each cup of tea. But then, uniformed thugs raided their Sydney home after the Australian border force intercepted the tea and their tests came out positive for the amphetamine phenmetrazine. They were arrested and held in jail for four months despite the fact that the police knew all along that the tests were problematic. ABF had replaced the tea with another completely innocuous substance, which the police seized when they raided their home the next day. They were charged with commercial drug supply, which has a penalty of life in prison. But the test result for phenmetrazine was especially problematic, given that the results only showed it the fourth most likely substance, behind sugar, sucrose, and powdered sugar. An AFP forensic operator wrote to Detective Senior Constable Tara Conahan, who was in charge of the investigation, quote, Mate, in a nutshell, we cannot take from this ABF result that the sample contains or does not contain phenmetrazine. The operator recommended that the sample be tested independently. Conahan did not pass this information on to the defense team, which in the U.S. would be a serious Brady violation. She also neglected to inform them of AFP notifying her of follow-up tests showing no prohibited substances detected. This was in February. Chong and Lim weren't even allowed bail until May, and the charges weren't withdrawn until August. In his cross-examination of Conahan, Chong's barrister Steve Boland asked why she didn't disclose the information. She replied, I didn't inform them. Boland, why not? Conahan, because the drugs were still waiting to be completely tested. Boland, 
So what, they've got to sit it down in jail? There was a pause while Conahan said nothing, and Boland said, quote, I'll assume that question is not going to be answered. They're now suing for costs which the prosecution has refused to pay. They should be suing for a lot more than that, given the disruption to their lives. These are a couple of innocent women who decided to make a few bucks selling tea. Who can possibly justify this treatment of them? If you're on the Wi-Fi in a coffee shop or hotel, anyone on that network can get your traffic. Do you really trust all of those strangers? For that matter, do you really trust your ISP? A VPN can protect you from prying eyes, disguise your location, and even foil government censors. It's essential in this day and age, so go to vpn.bogosity.tv and you'll be taken to BoxPN. Starting at just $2.99 a month, you can get unlimited high-speed connections to VPN servers all over the world, and they don't log connections, so your privacy is assured. Traveling abroad, just VPN home, and don't worry about what those other governments are doing. Back at home, stop your ISP from traffic shaping and messing with the quality internet access you're paying good money for. You can connect from multiple machines at once, including your smartphone or tablet, and it supports all the secure standards, including OpenVPN and SSTP. Bypass sensors and surveillance with your own secure VPN connection. Go to vpn.pagosity.tv. If the Pirate Bay were a person, it'd be an adult now, 18 years old, able to drive, vote, join the military, have consensual sex with any adult, everything except drink alcohol. Don't get me started. It's an amazing survival story, given the number of governments and media cartels attempting infanticide and pediacide. It was shut down twice, dozens of servers were raided, and its three co-founders were prosecuted and spent time in prison even though there's never actually been a single byte of copyrighted material hosted directly on the site. A report that's in Swedish, but that's been summarized in Torrent Freak, goes over some of the key players, like Monique Wadsted, the shyster who represented Hollywood against the site. When she was asked whether it was worth all the time and money, given that the Pirate Bay is still up, she said, Absolutely. That tells you everything you need to know. This was never about stopping piracy, which they always knew was impossible. It was about the chilling effects. Quote, Even though it was the American film companies that paid for my work, that work benefited all the authors and copyright holders. This is a very important, but often forgotten aspect. And how did it benefit them if it didn't do one thing to stop piracy? As we've pointed out time and time again, it's made it difficult for small and independent content creators to compete with the big content cartels. We've talked about how piracy has actually been beneficial to the industry, including giving companies like Spotify and Netflix information as to what was popular and what they should be hosting. But Wadstead says, quote, It is a cultivated myth that we would not have any streaming services for music, film, and TV series if Pirate Bay did not exist. Those who claim it do not understand how technology development works. For example, it was not a pirate movement that forced the development of smartphones. That's a really stupid comment given that Spotify and Netflix both launched before the introduction of the iPhone. But according to co-founder Peter Sunday, it wasn't even about that. It wasn't about people pirating content for free, and it wasn't about spurring on the development of streaming sites. It was about moving the power back from the big media cartels to individual artists and creators. He said, quote, I constantly meet people all over the world who tell me how important it has been, and is, for them to have access to materials. People who otherwise could not have the profession they have, or who have learned the language and culture. It wasn't the desire for piracy that caused Napster and the Pirate Bay, and later Spotify and Netflix. It was consumer frustration with the old dinosaur model of content consumption. The media cartels refused to change with the times, so file sharing services and BitTorrent gave them a much more convenient way of accessing what they wanted. Streaming services like Netflix came along and gave them a way of accessing the content they wanted without having to buy a $20 CD to get one or two songs or to pay exorbitant cable bills to watch movies and shows. For a while, it looked like things were getting better. 
Now the big conglomerates are obsessed with their own streaming services. Disney+, Plus, Paramount+, Plus, CBS All Access, getting us back to the same ridiculous and exorbitant prices we tried getting away from. Is it any wonder people are still pirating? One thing is sure, if the Pirate Bay ever does go away, it won't be because corrupt authoritarian accomplices forced it down. It will be because people stopped going there because it was no longer needed. Do you have children or nieces or nephews? Are you homeschooling or just want to counter some of the socialist indoctrination most children get in school? If so, go to bogosity.tv slash Tuttle Twins and you'll be taken to a website where you can get some great books for elementary age children. The Tuttle Twins books are books about liberty and free market economics that include children's versions of Bastiat's The Law, Leonard Reed's I Pencil, and Hayek's The Road to Serfdom, as well as books about the Federal Reserve and how regulations protect business cronies. They'll learn about the harm caused by eminent domain or regulations passed in the name of safety and fundamental concepts of liberty. And as you can see from the sample pages on the website, they're all easy to read and nicely illustrated. They're just $9.99 a piece, or get a special discount as well as free bonuses when you purchase all five. You can even buy in bulk to donate to schools and local libraries. So get the Tuttle Twins books at bogosity.tv slash Tuttle Twins. <laughs> And now it's time to civilianize this week's biggest bogan emitter. And this week it goes to Senator Josh Hawley for another stupid call to break up Twitter. Quote, We ought to break them up. At the end of the day, here's the deal. The last thing America needs is another big tech robber baron who doesn't care anything for free speech, and that's exactly what Twitter is giving us. That's for those of you who were still under the delusion that Republicans were somehow free market. He's basing this on Twitter's new private media policy, saying they should be broken up because of editorial decisions. I guess he's never heard of this little thing called the First Amendment. Twitter has had a long-standing policy not to publish private information of others, including phone numbers, addresses, and IDs. The new policy extends that to images, videos, and other personal media. So it doesn't make any sense when Holly said, quote, I promise you what it won't mean. The people whose privacy won't be protected are normal Americans who want to express their views, particularly if they have conservative views. I promise you that their privacy won't be respected. They'll still get censored. It's as if he just dips into the well of overused talking points and strings them together at random. If someone posts a personal picture or video of you that you don't want up, you can have it taken down. How does that in any way relate to what he said? Twitter is just the seventh most popular social media service in the U.S. and 15th worldwide. They're a relative minority. So even if antitrust laws were valid, you can't break them up for editorial decisions. And even if you could, Twitter isn't close to a monopoly. But if you're an authoritarian like Holly, because I don't like them is all the reason you need. He said, quote, it gives the social media platform even more control, which is scary. More control over what can be shown, and more proof that they are, indeed, a publisher and not simply eye-roll and unbiased platform. Of course, we debunked the bogus platform-publisher distinction long ago. But Twitter has always had control over what it does and doesn't allow on its platform, and Section 230 allows them to do so without giving up their conduit rights. No one ever claimed Twitter was unbiased, and the First Amendment protects the right to be biased anyway. I'm going to switch it up and let Holly have the last word. Quote, Let's just remember what Twitter does to make their money. The fiends! So all of that makes Senator Josh Hawley this week's Biggest Bogani Emitter. I want to tell you about the eyeglasses I've been wearing for years. As people can see on my videos, I have a very strong prescription, which makes glasses more expensive, especially when I need computer glasses, reading glasses, prescription sunglasses, and most expensively, progressive lenses for general everyday wear. 
To save money while still getting quality glasses, I get them from Fermu. In fact, I just got a pair of progressives with high-index aspherical lenses and a nice pair of frames my wife loves for just over $100. It would have been $500 to get them through my eye doctor. Not only do they look good, the glasses are durable. I've worn many pairs for several years without problems. All orders come with a 30-day return policy, a 3-month warranty, and one-on-one -on -one customer service. Go to Firmu, that's F-I-R-M-O-O dot Bogosity dot TV anytime you need quality glasses at a low price. Once again, that's Firmu dot Bogosity dot TV. And now let's pre-designate this week's Idiot Extraordinary! It's a bit surprising that we've never done Daily Coast, but they made sure of it this week with paranoid delusions about 3D printed guns. So, of course, we start off with the school shooting from 2019 to make sure your amygdala and hippocampus are stimulated so that your rational mind is cut off. Who would have expected anything else? The fear-mongering is about ghost guns, which can't be traced because they don't have a magic number stamped on the lower. They say, quote, in cities like Los Angeles and Baltimore, ghost guns recovered at crime scenes have increased by over 400% in a three-year time span and are still growing. And by now, all the regular listeners should know what to ask. Compared to what? I mean, if it's one crime and then four crimes three years later, that's a 400% increase. And notice they're just recovered at crime scenes, not saying they were actually used. Also, note the non-committal cities like Los Angeles and Baltimore. Which cities like LA and Baltimore? Just those two? What others are included? And I can't help notice that those are two cities with more than their share of gun control laws, increasing pretty much every year for at least a decade, and of course run by Democrats. Quote, Worst of all, Right-wing media opposition has ensured there will be no federal legislation to handle this threat. At least if by right-wing opposition you mean basic constitutional protections. Ready to laugh out loud? Quote, Regulation on these untraceable weapons amounts to an attack on the firearms industry. Because being able to print something without purchasing it from a firearm company somehow benefits the firearms industry. I don't even know what to say to that. I mean, to sensible people, you'd think the attack on the industry would be able to get one without purchasing it from them. It's funny how they keep giving examples of people not using 3D printed guns. They try to get around it by saying they buy AR-15 kits, but that just means they get them unassembled. That doesn't mean they're not getting lowers from FFLs. Meanwhile, it's still possible to ballistically match a bullet to a barrel. At the risk of sounding like a broken record, all you've ever needed to make your own firearm, even fully automatic assault rifles, is about $5,000 in machinist tools. Yet Daily Coast hopes you don't know that when they spew outright lies. Quote, Not long ago, only manufacturers like Remington, Glock, or Sig Sauer could manufacture firearms because the process required large, expensive machines and expert gunsmiths who knew something about weapons engineering. For that matter, prisoners keep making guns out of stuff they're able to acquire. Another outright lie, quote, In 2013, an open-source firm called Defense Distributed created The Liberator, a handgun completely made from plastic, save for one tiny nail, used as the firing pin that can be purchased at any hardware store. Uh, did you forget the barrel, morons? The barrel needs to be made of metal. As usual, Democrats are saints and Republicans evil. Quote, The Obama administration's State Department stopped a libertarian activist, Cody Wilson, from publishing blueprints of 3D printed weapons on the internet, and multiple courts ruled in favor of this policy. However, once Trump came into office, that decision was reversed. What actually happened was that sensible heads prevailed and decided that the First Amendment was still a thing after all. They even acknowledged that it's always been legal for people to make firearms for their own personal use. Bonus bogons for using the word epidemic. 
They hate the First Amendment. They hate the Second. They hate the Fourth and Fifth. They hate the Ninth. What part of the Constitution do they like anyway? So all of that makes Daily Coast this week's... Idiot Extraordinary! Well, that wraps up this... I'm afraid I couldn't find any needles, so we'll have to use six inch nails edition of the Bogosity Podcast. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please go to donate.bogosity.tv for several ways to support and discord.bogosity.tv to join the discussion. Subscribe at Patreon or Subscribe Star, and you can listen early and ad free. Thank you for listening. Until next time, here's a quote from Hugo Black The layman's constitutional view is that what he likes is constitutional and that which he doesn't like is unconstitutional. That about measures up the constitutional acumen of the average person. The Bogosity Podcast is licensed under Creative Commons Attribution Non-Commercial and Derivatives 4.0 International License. Bogosity. We live in a world where light bulbs connect to the internet, and recent attacks on them prove that your online security is under threat like never before. Not only your websites, but the internet-enabled devices you buy. And the biggest problem is weak passwords. That's why you need LastPass. LastPass allows you to randomly generate strong, unique passwords on the web and on your internet-enabled devices, all protected by one master password. LastPass sets up in minutes and gives you secure automatic logins throughout the web, synchronizing across all your browsers, all your computers, and even your mobile devices, at home, at work, or on the road. It even securely stores sensitive form data, including credit card numbers, backup sensitive documents, software licenses, Wi-Fi logins, and more. And with LastPass Premium, you can get these benefits on other applications, manage passwords for your entire family, and also get priority customer support. Sign up at password.bogosity.tv for a free month of LastPass Premium. Log in securely everywhere using the last password you'll ever have to remember. Go to password.bogosity.tv and get LastPass now.